Hello and welcome to Social Church. We're really excited to have the testimony of Ted White on Social Church today. Ted White is the founder of Epic Archaeology, as well as being a contributor for CNN and the History Channel. We can't wait to hear what Jesus has been doing in Ted's life. Over to you, Ted. Hi, my name is Ted Wright, and this is my testimony. So, my testimony is sort of uh, interesting, and I don't think it's, you know, when I, when I look back at my testimony, um, I kind of don't think it's really anything great uh, initially. I used to not think that, uh, and, and so it'll make sense as I sort of get into it. Um, my parents took me to church. My mom primarily took me to church when I was young, and one of the earliest remembrances I have of going to church was uh, singing in the church, you know, and, and listening to the hymns, things like that, not fully understanding what they meant. Uh, but it was one summer when we went to, my mom took me to Vacation Bible School here in the U.S. We have uh, these things called uh, VBS, Vacation Bible School, and uh, we will sing songs and make crafts. And, you know, most Americans have, you know, if you grew up in the church, you went to Vacation Bible School. But it was there at Vacation Bible School when I was nine years old that I first heard the gospel. And uh, our pastor came into the classroom, and he would uh, explain who Jesus was and what he did and why it was important that we trusted him as our Savior and what he did for us on the cross. So I'm a nine-year-old kid, and I'm listening to this, and he uh, he asked uh, if there's anybody in the class, uh, as he came around the different classes, he asked, uh, is there anyone here who would like to receive the free gift that God offers? And he, he, re- he really proposed it that way. He said, this is a free gift. It's nothing that you do. It's nothing that you earn. It's something that Jesus did for you on the cross. He paid the penalty for your sins. And uh, so he... He did this for you, and all you have to do, it's a gift that you have to receive. Would you like to receive that gift? And so as a kid, a nine-year-old child, uh, I raised my hand, and I said, yes, I would like to receive that gift. That's a wonderful thing. Um, so I did, and um, went into his office, and he uh, you know, uh, made sure that I understood what he was talking about. And uh, sure enough, I did, and uh, I was baptized and uh, got saved. Um, so I was nine years old. So, you know, when I, when I think about testimonies, you know, you hear people who, you know, grew up and they had a rough life and, you know, maybe they were a drug addict or whatever. And that's, that's you know, very powerful when you see what God's, you know, created a changed life. And it, it sort of look at my testimony as sort of in reverse. Um, the verse that comes to mind that really, I think, describes, I think I, this is just a way to brag on God or to say glory to God that he would still save me. It's the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, and he wrote in the book of Romans that uh, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, um, he said uh, that God demonstrates his own love in this, that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so that that sort of describes my testimony. And and what that means is basically this, that even though as a nine-year-old child, um, God looked down through time, and he saw that I was going to sin. In fact... Um, I since I've become a Christian, I have done some horrible things, and I have uh, I've hurt a lot of people, people that I loved, people that I cared for, close friends, my family, people I hurt very, very much, and yet God still decided to save me. And I, that is purely an act of his grace. Uh, that is a demonstration of his love towards us, and that even while I was yet a sinner, he still died for me. And that's just quite remarkable. So you know, when I look back at my own testimony, I think I look back as a nine-year-old child. You know, I didn't, you know, growing up in my first eight years of my life, I wasn't a drug addict or anything. Uh, I was still a sinner and still in need of the Savior. Uh, but even even that, God looked, you know, you know, the Scripture seems to indicate he looked forward in time. And even though he knew, he knew I was going to fail, he knew I was going to royally mess up, it's like David and like many other uh, people in the Bible, yet he still saved me. And so that is an incredible, remarkable thing to me because it is it is really about grace. And, you know, I, I thought I understood grace, and I did. I had a very rudimentary understanding of grace. But I think as I've, as I've grown older in my faith and as I've, you know, continued to move forward, I can really see that it truly is an act of grace. It is nothing—it's it's a, it's a complete work of God in my life that he's done. 
And the thing about it is, is that Paul says also that he who began a good work in you will continue to complete it and bring it to completion to the day of our, uh, of our you know, glorification, to the day of our salvation. So, so God has started a work in my life. He started when I was a nine-year-old child, and, uh, you know, I started that journey, and I began to walk with the Lord. I got away from the Lord. I've done some things that, that hurt him, uh, that hurt my family, that hurt my friends. I have disappointed people, I've failed people, I've failed God, and yet still through that, God, by his grace and by his mercy, has still decided to save me. And so I'm, I'm continuing to learn about his grace, I'm continuing to learn to trust in him, and uh, realizing that as uh, one of my favorite writers, uh, Eugene Peterson, uh, he's now with the Lord, he wrote a book called A Long Obedience in the Same Direction, and that, it's a great description of what discipleship is. It is a long obedience in the same direction. And so I started that journey back when I was nine years old, and uh, by God's grace, um, you know, as, as the Lord Prayer says, uh, give us this day our daily bread. And so I'm learning, I'm continuing to learn that, to, you know, trusting God and walking with the Lord is a daily thing. As a, as a young Christian, I began to grow my faith, and I began to read the Bible, as many people do, and uh, I was fascinated with the stories in the Bible, and for whatever reason, and I guess, I don't know if it's just because I had an, an active imagination as, as a kid, but I really loved the stories in the Old Testament, and uh, they really, really resonated with me, and of course, you know, God knows that, that, that story is important, and and story really is what uh, attracts us, uh, you know, to to something. We can really follow a story. So, I was following the story of the Israelites through the Old Testament, and uh, I decided I was I joined the U.S. military. I was in the U.S. Air Force for a while, and I uh, decided to get out. And I was going to go to college. And at the time, I was going to get my degree. Uh, I was planning on getting my degree in ancient history, uh, and doing it like a minor in philosophy. So what I decided to do was um, to, to uh, get out of the Air Force. I was going to go to college and get, the, get that degree. And uh, I was still a little unsure as to exactly what that was the right career path. And I was talking to, to a pastor friend, and he suggested uh, that I consider archaeology. He said, that I think that may be something that you might be really interested in. So, so I uh, began to look into it, and, and I found that archaeology was, was really, really fascinating because it was, not only was it ancient history, but it was also science as well, and it joined the two together. So, uh, so I ended up deciding to change it, and I, and I ended up getting a degree in archaeology. So it was while I was an archaeology student, uh, undergraduate, um, you know, again, I was a believer, so I did believe the Bible, believed the stories in the Bible, but I didn't really, didn't really understand the historical background or any understand any of the archaeology or history behind it. And I didn't go to a Christian school. I went to a secular school, an undergraduate school, university. And uh, it was there that my professors began to uh, throw a question on the stories in the Bible uh, that they were actually true. Uh, they, they basically were saying that, well, the... They, they may have a kernel of truth in them, possibly, but the archaeology really doesn't support this. So that really caused a little bit of concern for me. In fact, I was just a little concerned a lot, actually. I began to uh, not really doubt my faith, but I really had some confusion. I didn't really know how to reconcile what they were, sell what they were telling me with, uh, you know, my faith wasn't being reconciled with what we found on the ground. So it really bothered me, and I really kind of started a quest to try to find out if, in fact, there, there was any evidence for this, because uh, I sort of believe that there was, and I believe that Jesus, and of course he told stories uh, in the New Testament about the Old Testament, he did affirm many of the Old Testament figures, so I, I knew that I, you know, Jesus was right, but I didn't quite know and understand how the Old Testament could be right as well, uh, at least uh, archaeologically. So that get, that began a quest in my own life to try to find answers. And so that led me into apologetics, which um, many people are, may or may not know comes from, from the Greek word apologia, where the Apostle Peter says, always be ready to give an answer for the reason, the hope that's within you, but do this with gentleness and respect. And in the original Greek, the word answer is the Greek word apologia or apologia, which means defense. So always be ready to give a defense. So 
So I began to study apologetics books and found that there is incredible evidence uh, of the historicity of the Old Testament, the antiquity of the Old Testament, and the reliability of the Old Testament. And um, so that started a quest several years ago, many years ago when I was an undergrad student, and that led me to eventually uh, work for a major apologetics ministry. Uh, I got my, my master's degree in apologetics uh, in, here in the United States, studied under one of the top apologists in the U.S., and uh, so and just a, two years ago, I actually uh, started a website and a, a nonprofit called Epic Archaeology, uh, and uh, people can go there, check it out at epicarchaeology.org. And so what I want to do there is actually uh, provide reasons or provide answers for the very questions that I had uh, as a student. And I know that a lot of other people have these questions as well. But the cool thing is that, you know, in the past, I would say, you know, 25 or 30 years, it's been really come out of the ground for many years, but in the, in the past couple of decades, uh, there has just it been an increase of, of artifacts and evidence archaeologically that the, that the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, is a reliable historical document because, you know, we're talking about the gospel here. We're talking about, you know, John three sixteen for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So if that is true, and the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says that if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ is resurrected. And if Christ is not resurrected, then our faith is futile. It's empty. It's vain. So... So the Apostle Paul makes an intimate connection between history and the gospel. And if Jesus is not historically actually risen from the dead, then our faith is empty. So there is a really an intimate connection between history and the gospel. And I'm a Christian because not only does it just, you know, it, you know, it doesn't look like this work for me, but I'm a Christian because I actually believe that Jesus is risen from the dead, and that is the basis of the gospel, is the resurrection and what God did for us on the cross. The amazing thing is that we want to make it so hard and so difficult, uh, but it is a simple act of faith, but uh, it is, uh, it's mediated the story of the gospel. Uh, for God's love of the world, that, that story is found in the gospel. So, it, you know, so the pages of the Bible are a very important link between how we come to understand the gospel. So it's a simple thing. Um, it is trust. It is belief. Um, it is simple faith, trusting in what God did for you on the cross 2,000 years ago, and he has not left us without a witness. We have um, many infallible proofs, as Scripture says, to show us that we can trust what God says is actually true. Praise God for these testimonies. Thank you so much. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. We release new testimonies every single week alongside Q&As, expository preaching and acoustic worship sessions thanks a lot for listening and see you soon bye